Hello and welcome to this week's podcast. I hope that you are each doing well. We are turning again to our theme of hope and focusing today on Psalm 23, the well-known psalm which reminds us of the way God provides, protects, and cares for us all who are faithful. The news this past week has been filled with stories of hurt, sadness, anger, and mourning, and so much more. We have watched news stories cover what has been going on in the States with the response of the murder of George Floyd, Ahmaud Aubrey, and Breonna Taylor. This has resurfaced racial inequality and a lack of racial justice. We turn our news on and see images of videos of protest, police brutality, and political leaders who are saying and doing things which are not helping society but causing further harm and damage. Where do we find hope in this? When our news feed is filled to the brim of stories which bring tears to our eyes and cause our hearts to break with the harm that is being done to and by our sisters and brothers in Christ, where do we find that hope which is promised by Jesus? This is something which I have struggled with greatly as I watch and hear these stories which are coming from my home. I watch as people are speaking out for those whose voices have been quieted. I watch as people are marching peacefully in protest and being tear gassed. And I wonder where is this hope which, is, which God has spoken of? Because if it is there, I am having a hard time seeing it. Whether or not what is going on has impacted you, we have all experienced something during our lifetimes, which has made us question where the hope in that story was. We have all watched people be hurt, whether at a protest or something else, and wonder where this Christian hope is. It is a good question because it means we are looking for it, because we know it is possible for hope to be present in those different situations. Before we go any further, let's look at the scripture passage. As I said, our scripture is from Psalm 23. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Thanks be to God. Amen. There is so much that we could look at in this passage which, which could open our eyes to the hope which God has promised to provide us. We are reminded throughout the psalm of the nearness of God, whether in good times or when we are walking through the darkest valley. The psalm is one of comfort, love, and hope. There is so much to explore in this psalm, and I encourage you to take time to explore the entirety of this psalm and see where you see hope in this psalm. I want to look at a couple of the verses from the second part of this psalm. Have you ever been out for a walk at nighttime and whatever you are using for a torch has gone out and it is pitch black around you? You cannot see anything around you and there is no way of knowing how to get back to where a safe space might be. Fear usually starts to creep in and you wonder how in the world you might be able to make it back safely. We've all been walking through a dark valley with the uncertainty of the coronavirus, how to figure out what life and work looks like as we have been living in the situation that no one has a solution for. We look to all around trying to find a way to get out of this and we have a hard time seeing anything that is going to fully get us out 
of this dark valley. Yet, even when we find ourselves surrounded by the darkness, darkness, we are reminded that we are not alone, and the Lord is there like a shepherd guiding his sheep to guide us through this time when we don't know what the future will look like. We can live into the hope that even when we cannot see a foot in front of us, we do not journey alone. We can rest in the hope that even when we find ourselves in a time of our lives or in like a pandemic like we are in right now, and hope might seem in short supply, God comes along like a shepherd leading a sheep and says, My beloved, you are not alone. I will not leave your side and you will make it through this time. If we look back at this past week in the news, there were a lot, a lot of dark valleys. And those dark valleys have been there for a while and people have ignored them or stumbled around in the darkness, thinking they had gotten somewhere, only now to realize that we haven't really moved anywhere in those dark valleys. In all honesty, we probably have just done lots of circles but not actually gotten any closer to making our way out of that valley. But there is a sign of hope. There have been signs of hope that God has been guiding us with his shepherding rod and staff. We have seen people using their voices to speak up for those whose voices have been pushed to the margins or have been silenced. We have seen people taking actions to not only speak and protest, but also to listen and to learn. We have seen people wrestling with how to work towards racial equality and also figuring out their roles in this long-standing story of racial inequality and injustice. We have seen stories of people in other countries, including in the UK, out protesting. People in many areas of this world are speaking out, and all of this is a big sign of hope. We might still be in this dark valley, but we are moving forward, being guided by the Holy Spirit, rather than turning in circles, getting absolutely nowhere. Not only is God guiding us through the darkest valley, just as a shepherd guides their sheep, but God prepares a table for us in the presence of our enemies. Food has this way of restoring us and providing us what we need in order to continue living. We need food in order to keep living and when we are properly nourished, we are able to live our lives to the fullest. Hope is very much the same. When we deplete ourselves of hope, we have a harder time finding a way to move forward in life. We might find ourselves going around in circles thinking that we are getting somewhere, only to realize that we are stuck in the exact same place. Think about people who have been stuck in a dark valley for a long time, and their hope is depleted constantly. They are tired. They are hungry and nearly void of hope. For black and brown people who have been dealing with racism, racial inequality, and racial injustices their whole lives, they have experienced losses of hope in times when they have felt completely void of hope that things would not get any better. They haven't had the ability to rest and sit at a table and replenish themselves. We read in this psalm that God, as the shepherd, prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. Before a shepherd took their sheep into a pasture, they would prepare a table, meaning that they would check that pasture for any threats or dangers and remove those threats or dangers. Then the shepherd would move the sheep into this pasture so that they could graze safely. For all those who have been surrounded by their enemies, whatever those threats might be, imagine what it would be like to be protected and watched over like that. 
Think of the hope that this kind of shepherding provides. Think about all the people who have been experiencing racial inequality and racial injustice. Imagine what it would be like for all those people who have been surrounded by enemies for so long to be guided and protected by the shepherd, this caring God, who makes sure that these threats are removed before they are moved into a new space to feed themselves. We have this amazing God who watches over his sheep and make sure, make sure that they are protected, nourished, and cared for. This God walks with us through our dark, darkest valleys and makes a safe space for us to nourish ourselves. Imagine being able to live our lives without fear because we hope and trust in God who has promised to watch over us and who loves us abundantly. This past Sunday it was Pentecost when we, when we recall the Holy Spirit descending upon the disciples' heads and they went out to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to all the corners of the earth. The psalmist and the psalm give th gives thanks that God has anointed their heads with oil and that their cup overflows. God has anointed each of us with the Holy Spirit and fills us up to overflowing with hope and love and we are called to go into this world and spread this amazing and nourishing hope to the corners of the world. Thanks be to God. Amen.